good morning you're watching uh, rajasabha television on the 13th of november welcome to the breakfast news i'm frank pereira let's begin with the headlines East Asia summit gets underway in KP Thaw, Myanmar. Prime Minister Narendra Modi amid leaders of 18 nations attending at the Asian summit. Modi invites Southeast Asian nations to invest in India. BJP wins confidence motion in Maharashtra Assembly by voice vote. Congress terms it unconstitutional. Shiv Sena demands division of votes and re-voting. Consumer inflation at record low of 5.5% in October. Industrial production is up to stock markets hit new highs. And Vishwanathan Anand forces Magnus Carlsen to a comfortable draw in the fourth game at the World Chess Championship in Sochi. Scores tied to a piece. Our top focus on the bulletin this morning, Prime Minister Narendra Modi is attending the East Asia Summit in Myanmar that got underway just a short while back this morning. He is to address the summit meet later today. The 18-nation summit includes members from uh, ASEAN countries as well as uh, the US, Japan, India, Russia, China and Australia. Energy, environment and regional stability and among, are among the host of issues likely to be discussed. Prime Minister Modi is also expected to hold bilateral talks with Chinese Prime Minister Li Qichang and uh, meet several other leaders. The Prime Minister and uh, President, uh, US President Barack Obama briefly met uh, during the gala dinner at the ASEAN summit yesterday. Obama called Modi a man of action. Besides leaders from Southeast Asian nations, Modi also met Myanmar opposition leader and Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi yesterday. Joining me for a chat this morning is a senior journalist Kamar Aga. Good morning, uh, Mr. Aga, and thank you for joining mm -hmm. me on the program. Let's talk about uh, Narendra Modi's visit to Myanmar now, and of course, uh, uh, what all that's likely to happen today. The meeting has all the summit has already begun. What is it that we expect out of the summit? What can India expect? You see, there are two things. Uh, one is uh, closer ties, mm. further strengthening ties with the neighboring countries as well as with the Southeast Asian nations, yes. East Asian nations, you know, which is the top priority of the Prime Minister. He has been emphasizing from the day one. Second thing, you know, uh, Modi's uh, plan is to convert India, is to make it India as a uh, global manufacturing hub mm. and a service provider yes. center. Yes. So he for that he wants to bring uh, investment in India, foreign investment, you know, and he's trying to assure its uh, foreign counterparts, you know, okay, look, we are going to amend the mm. new uh, laws, you know, there'll be smooth selling, no problems, you know, uh, one window, you know, you can just come in and invest in India. So it's going to become far more, far easier, more you know, easier for the, the for laws the, before this were extremely stringent for foreign investors to come into India. So now it's going to be far more easier. Is far what you're more saying. easier for all yes. these things, you know. Plus, you know, he's trying to create a climate of uh, peace and friendship, mm -hmm. you know, with mm -hmm. these people. Mm -hmm. There are many issues. There are many hurdles. You know, it's not that simple. You know, like then besides this, there are other issues. You know, India has an advantage. You know, we have a big middle class, mm. English is speaking, mm. uh, computer savvy. Then we have a, a, a technical class of people, you know, cheap labor compared to China or Europe or yes. America or, or the Southeast Asian nations. So we have a, we can, uh, you know, India has a potential to emerge as a uh, uh, manufacturing hub, you mm. know, many countries are mm. looking, they're also looking, you know, it's a mutually bene beneficial thing, you know, they're also looking for new markets. India has a big market. We have the largest number, almost 300 million middle class. I don't think any other country has that big middle class. So, so India has provides big market as well as, you know, manufacturing hub, you know. And, you know, there's a lot to learn for both parties, isn't it? I mean, the ASEAN countries as well as India, because the 10 ASEAN countries are doing extremely well as far as their GDP is concerned. The economy is growing at a relatively large uh, pace as well. So both, both sides have a lot to learn from each other. Yeah, it's a win-win situation for both, you know, because uh, India's uh, geopolitical situation, India's location, you know, 
in the region, you know, they can manufacturing things here and then ship it to the Central Asia or West Asia or, you know, India itself or South Asia, you know, these are the big markets, you mm. know. Mm. Then, you know mm. then second thing, you know, we also look towards them, you know, the development model, yes. how they develop fast, you know. So it is, uh, uh, and then second thing, you know, we have a historical ties with this region, thousands of year old yes. relations, you yes. know, Buddhism went from, not only religion also went from mm. uh, from mm. here, you mm. know, so they look towards India. Second thing, you know, the growing Chinese influence in the region. Yes. They are, these countries have big trade with China, but they are also apprehensive with the Chinese mm. expansionist policies in the region, you know. They are very afraid, you know, of it, you know, because the way Chinese have developed their naval bases in yes, South, South Asia. Sea. So all these countries want India to provide, you know, to protect the sea lanes between from Gulf of Oman right up to the uh, Strait of Malacca, you know. But as, as far as the South China Sea is concerned, are these countries expecting too much out of India to try and be that, you know, that 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 uh, that block against China? No, you know, uh, they want to counterbalance China. Hmm. India is the only country which has the population, which has a big army, which has a this army. I mean, war is not going to take yes, place. You know, yes, that is not the option. It's just posturing. That is just a posturing, you know. That's the posturing and the second thing, you know, it's a big country which has a linkages or closer ties with the Western nations, India's democracy, all these things are attracting to mm -hmm. them. And mm -hmm. second thing, you know, that Vietnam or Cambodia or for that matter, you know, Philippines, these are very small, yes. tiny nations, you know, yes. they seek India's support, you know, we have, they need in investments also, so India is investing there. What India is, tell, India is telling China, India is telling others, you know, sort out all these differences through peaceful hmm, hmm. negotiation. China hmm. has accepted this yes. thing, you know. So we are expecting something would come, you know. We are also facing problem with China. Yes. So these, these are the difficulties, you know. Yeah, several things, difficulties, know. but it but looks like it's heading in the positive direction and a, the right direction, at least for the right. time being. So let's talk about uh, something else now. Let's talk about Prime Minister reaching Brisbane, of course, on uh, uh, Friday. And uh, they, he will be reaching Australia for the G20 summit that starts on the 15th of this month. There are high expectations from Modi's Australia visit. Australian High Commissioner to India said Modi's domestic agenda is exactly the agenda which G20 was prioritizing. Besides Modi, the meeting will be attended by US President Barack Obama and other world leaders. Modi is also scheduled to address Australian Parliament and is slated to interact with members of the Indian community during his four-day visit and meet top Aussie businessmen at the Round Table in Melbourne. The focus it's is also on how soon can bilateral civil nuclear cooperation agreement be implemented that the two nations had signed two months back. Mr. Raga, this is uh, another leg of Prime Minister Modi's visit. Of course, he's going to Australia on Friday and then he's going to attend the G20 summit. All eyes this time around are on Narendra Modi, they're not on Barack Obama or some of the other world leaders. Yeah, that's true, you know. Um, Barack Obama has dubbed him as a man of action yes. yesterday. You know. yes. he, he wants to implement his policies very fast and very quickly, you know. No nonsense, you know. Just go ahead, you know. He's a go-getter yes. type. Second thing, you know, his agenda of development is at, has attracted to not only Indian youth, you know, but throughout the region, if you see, you know, and uh, Southeast Asia or South Asia, you know, mm. so everybody is looking towards India, you know. India has emerged as a major power in the region, not only in the global, emerging as a global power. Then as, I, as we were talking about the Chinese expansionism, you know, is a matter of concern for all those people, you know. Second thing, Australia is very important for us yes. also, you know, yes. for nuclear supply, uh, you know, uranium supply, you know, and we have it ties with Australia. Now, last few years, you know, the government of India is emphasizing, you know, trying to develop an axis between India, Japan, Australia. This is a very powerful axis is emerging yes. here for Asia-Pacific region, you know, would be there, you know. Australia is also now looking towards us and this region. You You're know, talking about the uh, nuclear program and the civil nuclear deal. Yeah. Can we see some kind of an agreement on that front this time around? You know, agreement is already there, you mm. know. There are some hitch. There is, I mean, we have to 
go through certain procedures that is taking time you know but now the government is in majority strong government is is in center we hope we'll sort it out very soon i think that has to be dealt with the americans you know because mm. we have to mm. deal it with the americans one two three agreement and then there are other agreement we have to get into the nuclear supplier group you know all these things you know procedures taking place you know before major hurdles have already been solved by the previous government they have already signed a nuclear deal with them now australia is also willing to sell uranium to india you yes. know so we'll have to deal with australia also and with the other countries you know then uh, there are certain thing in nuclear liability bill you know that is another hurdle you know uh, in the nuclear trade you know yes. these are the issues which will come up and modi Prime Minister Modi is very confident that he believes that next six months, you know, it will take to sort out all these. I'm very hopeful, you know, the next Parliament session, a lot of th these things would come, like uh, labor laws or like uh, land acquisition mm -hmm. bill is mm -hmm. uh, going to come up in the Parliament. No, not too many, not too many days to go for the next session of Parliament. Just ten days to go, just and, and, and we we'll are very close. <laughs> yes, yes, and we'll know exactly what happens as far as the winter session is concerned. Rajya Sabha TV will be tracking everything, of course, and you'll get all the updates from Parliament as well. Thank you so much, Kamaraga, for joining me on the program this morning and putting things into perspective for us. Moving on now, the political drama in Maharashtra just refuses to end. The BJP did win the vote of confidence in the assembly yesterday, but by a voice vote with plenty of protest by the Congress and the Shiv Sena that has taken the opposition benches for now. Then there was the alleged incident of uh, MLAs heckling the governor on the matter. Here's a detailed report. It was a day of high drama in and outside the Maharashtra Assembly on Wednesday. The 13-day-old minority BJP government successfully passed the floor test. The motion was moved and passed by a voice vote. The decision did not go down well with Shiv Sena or Congress members. Both parties claimed that BJP did not have the numbers to prove its majority through a division vote. They lodged a strong protest demanding fresh trust vote. Maharashtra ki jantantrik ityas ka ek sabse kala din hai. Or Congress party ka ek shist mandar, ek pratinidhi mandar, Rajyapal Mahoday se milega. Or hamari puri mang hai ki vishwas darshak prastav phir se rakha jaye. Jo demand ka ek sab opposition party ne ki thi ki sabhi ne ki wahan par aaj voting hona chahiye. ये डिमांड अध्यक्ष ने सुनी नहीं है उन्होंने जो पोल की मांग हम लोगों ने सब विरोधी पक्ष के सदस्यों ने की थी उसे भी ठुकरा कर वहाँ पर गड़बड़ी में यहाँ पर कामकाज सदन का काम आगे बढ़ाने का काम किया ये भी महाराष्ट्र के जनता के साथ विश्वासघात है The decision to avoid a division vote is being seen as an attempt to not bring on record the possibility of Sharad Pawar's NCP having voted for the BJP or abstaining. However, the party said they would have abstained to help the Fadnavis government win the trust vote. NCP has left BJP guessing on its next move in case a fresh flow test is announced. NCP's role is we have kept our position that Maharashtra needs a stable government. As Governor C. Vidya Sagar Rao made his way into the assembly in the evening to make an address, Congress and Sena MLAs blocked his way outside the assembly. Five Congress legislators have been suspended for two years. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Moving on now, the Election Commission on Wednesday reviewed uh, preparations for assembly elections in Jammu and Kashmir. Deputy Election Commissioner Vinod uh, Zuche, who is on a two-day visit to Jammu, said that the security of the people is paramount during the poll process. He also directed the DEOs to ensure all necessary arrangements for free and fair elections. The Chief Electoral Officer also briefed uh, Zuche about uh, the measures initiated to meet all the challenges for smooth conduct of first and second phases of polling. The state will have five-phase polling between November 25th and December 20th. We'll slip into a short break now, but still to come on the program, an anti-terror court in Pakistan has issued arrest warrants against Imran Khan and Tahir Ul Qadri for attacking the state TV channel and parliament. That and much more coming up. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. Well, consumer inflation hit a record low of 5.52% in October, its lowest pace since retail inflation numbers were first published in January 2012. The numbers were released yesterday. This is the fourth consecutive month of decline in the retail inflation, which had fallen to 6.46% in the previous month. The overall food inflation came down to 5.59% in October as against 7.67% in the previous month. With retail inflation easing for the third consecutive month, the clamour for a rate cut by the Reserve Bank of India in its upcoming monetary policy is likely to intensify. RBI's next monetary policy is due on December 2nd, 2014. Let's take, let's take a look now at some newsmaking events scheduled for the day today in our segment, Day Ahead. CRPF's Diamond Jubilee Parade will take place today. Home Minister Rajnath Singh will be the chief guest at the parade of the Central Reserve Police Force. The event will start at 10.30 a.m. at the Kadapur Group Centre in Gurgaon. With 228 battalions and various other establishments, the CRPF is considered India's largest paramilitary force. The Congress party will be holding a function to celebrate Jawaharlal Nehru's 125th birth anniversary. The event will start at 11 a.m. at Talkatora Stadium in Delhi. The Congress has not invited the Prime Minister or any other BJP leader to this event or other related with the Nehru anniversary celebrations, hoping the aggressive ideological posture would help kickstart its revival efforts. Today is the last day for the withdrawal of candidatures for the Rajya Sabha biennial polls from Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand. Elections will be held for 10 seats in Uttar Pradesh and one vacancy in Uttarakhand. Defence Minister Manohar Parikar and uh, SP General Secretary Ram Gopal Yadav are all set to be elected unopposed. Indian Army Chief General Dalbir Singh Suhag, who arrived in Kathmandu yesterday, will be conferred the honorary title of General of the Nepal Army by President Ram Baran Yadav at a function at Nepal's Rashtrapati Bhavan. He will also meet Prime Minister Sushil Koirala. General Suhag's visit comes ahead of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's trip to Nepal later this month to attend the SARC summit. Former Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar will kickstart the Sampark Yatra from Betia in West Champaram today. The Yatra is seen as JDU's campaign for the Assembly polls next year. Nitish Kumar will address 32 public meetings in as many districts during 16-day tour. The senior JDU leader had embarked on three Yatras across Bihar during the tenure as the State Chief Minister. 16 left parties in West Bengal led by CPIM will hold a convention in Kolkata today aiming to forge a greater unity among them. Earlier, a meeting was held between the 10 constituents of the left front in West Bengal led by CPIM and seven other left parties. Last month, CPIM General Secretary Prakash Karat had met SUCI leader Prabhash Ghosh during saying efforts were on to strengthen left unity. Moving on to some international news now, an anti-terrorism court in Islamabad has issued non-bailable arrest warrants for Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf Chairman Imran Khan and Pakistan Awami Tehreek Chief Tahir ul Qadri. The arrest warrants were issued for attacking the Pakistan Television Building and Parliament in September. Angry protesters had entered the news headquarters of the state-owned television channel and transmission was taken off air temporarily. The protesters had also damaged furniture and television equipment during the rampage. Police said that they would consider arresting the protest leaders once they receive a written court order. Khan and Qadri's uh, parties have been waging months of protests calling for Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif to step down over allegedly rigging the 2013 elections that brought him to power. <laughs> मियां साहब कबरा गए हैं तीस के जलसे से तीस के धरने से खौफ आ गया है कि अब डरा रहे हैं कि अच्छा जी वारंट आ गई रेस्ट की मियां साहब आप तो डरते होंगे इन चीजों से मैं तो इसको खुशखबरी इसलिए समझता हूं कि और मेरी कौन जागेगी लेट्स नाउ गेट यू सम अदर न्यूज़ एंड अपडेट्स फ्रॉम अराउंड द ग्लोब इन आवर सेगमेंट वर्ल्ड रैप NATO has reported significant new Russian troop movements into Ukraine. NATO's top military commander said that the convoys of tanks, artillery and combat troops were streaming over the border in what appeared to be preparations for renewed military action. Western officials seemed ready to acknowledge that a ceasefire agreement signed in September had fallen apart. 
The European Space Agency landed a probe on a comet on Wednesday, a first in space exploration. The achievement marks uh, the climax of a decade-long mission to examine up close the remnants of the birth of Earth's solar system. Scientists hope samples from the surface will help show how planets and life are created as the rock and ice that make up comets. The WHO says that the number of uh, people killed by Ebola has risen to 5,160. The frequency of new cases no longer appears to be increasing in Guinea and Liberia but remains high in Sierra Leone. The Ebola outbreak is thought to have infected more than 14,000 people, almost all of them in West Africa. Suicide bombings and car bombs including an attack on uh, federal police headquarters killed 23 people in Iraq on Wednesday. A car bomb followed shortly afterwards by a suicide bombing killed 11 people at the police building in Al Nisor Square in Baghdad including six policemen. In uh, Diyala province north of Baghdad, an army colonel and five soldiers were killed when a suicide bomber attacked his convoy. The UN has said that Afghan opium cultivation hit a historic high in 2014, up 17% since last year. Most poppies are still grown in southern Helmand province where British troops were stationed until October. Billions of dollars have been spent trying to eradicate opium poppies in Afghanistan since US-led troops ousted the Taliban in 2001. Over to some news from the stock market now. The Indian stocks uh, cheered on Wednesday with Sensex touching an all-time high and closing above the psychological mark of 28,000. US stocks were little changed on Wednesday as investors saw little reason to push indices. In the US markets, the Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 2.7 points or 0.02% to end the day at 17,612. Standard & Poor's 500 lost 1.43 points or 0.07% to close at 2038. The Nasdaq Composite added 14.58 points or 0.31% to finish at 4675. Breaking its 7-day losing streak, gold prices soared on Wednesday by 400 rupees or 0.45% to reach 26,450. Per 10 grams on emergence of buying by jewelers and retailers on the back of a good ongoing wedding season and also firming trend overseas. Silver also recovered by 350 or 0.23% to 35,500 per kilogram on increased offtake by industrial units and coin makers. Asian stocks fell for the first time in five days on Thursday after the yen gained against the dollar. Japan's Nikkei is down by 42.70 points or 0.23% to 17,154 at the start of today's trading. Hong Kong's Hang Seng lost 84.46 points or 0.13% to 23,938 at the start of trading. And we'll slip into another short break now. All the sports updates lined up for you on the other side. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching The Breakfast News on Rajya Sabha Television. Let's take a look now at uh, updates from the sports arena in our latest sports beat. World well, Chess Champion Magnus Carlsen and title challenger India's Vishwanathan Anand on Wednesday decided to split points after 47 moves in their fourth game of the title match held in Russia. At the end of the fourth game, both players have two points each in the 12-game match. Anand withstood everything that Carlsen hurled at him and eventually made the Norwegian force a draw by perpetual checks. A rampaging India would like to continue their dominance and a hapless Sri Lanka would look to salvage some pride during the penultimate game of the five-match series at the Eden Gardens on Thursday. India, led by Virat Kohli, have already won the series, having uh, taken an unassailable 3-0 lead. Kerala Blasters FC and Mumbai City FC finished with a nil-nil draw in an Indian Super League match at the Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium on Wednesday. Kerala is down at the 6th spot, managing 9 points from 8 matches. Mumbai drew level on 11 points with 3rd place FC Pune City, but remained below them on inferior goal difference. 
The International Boxing Association has said that Indian boxer Sarita Devi can expect a heavy punishment. Sarita lost in the semi-finals of the women's lightweight competition at Incheon, South Korea in September and tried to give her medal to her opponent at the presentation ceremony as a protest. World number one Novak Djokovic thrashed Stanislas Wawrinka 6-3-6-0 as he closed in on a stunning climax to his season at the ATP World Tour Finals on Wednesday. The Serb responded to losing the first two games to Team Roll, the Swiss who was unfortunate to meet the defending champion at his imperious best. Djokovic is now poised to qualify for the semi-finals. Finally, here's a run with a difference at an altitude of 14,500 feet amid blistering heat with just 21 participants. It's called the Volcano Marathon in the Atacama Desert in Chile, South America. I'm going to leave you with these visuals. Have a nice day.